Welcome to the downside. My name is Jamarco Sarezi. A little bit chaotic today. Russell little, is little chaos. Throwing, throwing things into. Uh, can we say anything? No. no. No, because I mean, also, I don't know when this is coming out. If you, know. you if you can guess why Russell would be suddenly very stressed. Stressed. Just found out you 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 you're you're in Gutenberg the musical. Uh -huh. You uh you're you're understudying Josh Gad. You've had a lot of very big celebrities. Yes. I uh this is coming out in a couple weeks, so uh, we can't say uh, Russell Brand was on last show, <laughs> and Russell was really excited. Yeah, I was so excited. You're a big yeah. fan of his big, big pharma uh, name, conversations. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, well, Russell Daniels is here, my co-host. Very excited to have him, and and we're joined by a stand-up comedian writer. Just got back from Edinburgh. Chloe Radcliffe, Hello. welcome to the downside. Hello, thank Woo. you for having me. New setup. New setup. We're trying this out. Ninety degrees. Uh huh. I'm worried I'm going to be in both angles. It's chaos. Yeah. We're trying to. I've had this studio for a while, and you know, do you ever have a podcast? Do you ever try this? I gotta say, I have spent years being like, I should have a podcast, and then I every single time I think about it, I'm like. I don't want to have a podcast. It's tough. And I'm not saying I should have a podcast. You should. You yeah. want to have a podcast. Yeah. I it's I wish I'd started angles. the beginning of COVID, man. Yeah, 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 totally. Just like thank God I did TikTok beginning of COVID. Yeah. You know. But uh you, Is that when you started TikTok? Yeah, not not like at the beginning. I really do think if I had started 3 months earlier, <laughs> I'd be You'd be a king. Famous. I'd yeah, be Yeah, no, king. no. I I I mean, I look back it's it is funny because I I feel both sides. On one hand, like I started in like November of yeah, uh, COVID, yeah, and I felt late at that point. Sure, I felt very behind. I probably the curve started in October, really. But I I looked through your TikTok and oh, you you you, you, you did me, the huh? game. You think you're better than me? Huh? <laughs> oh yeah, I, October. Uh, Honestly, actually, now that I think about it, I think I started in October too. Okay, we have so. proof. We don't have to even <laughs> debate it. <laughs> don't look it up. Don't look it up. <laughs> um, uh, very happy to have you. Little, I don't know when the last time we saw each other was. It's been chaos with the travel, and yeah. uh, I, I wish I, I want to want to catch up every week. I have so much to go over. Mm -hmm. uh, but but before we get to you, I I, sh I do. I thought about adding a new segment where I just apologize for something. Okay. Yeah. And um, a lot to apologize for. Is anyone else's headphones cutting in and out, or just me? Just just you. Just you, just buddy. Me. I'm gonna take them off. Go ahead, take them off. Uh, fun. Um, <laughs> So take something else off too. Yo. <laughs> I was in Columbus. Wow, I hurt really, my arm. really breezing over me just what? sexually harassing your co-host. <laughs> oh, that's pretty standard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty standard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Once you're doing it on him to the guest. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> the power dynamic uh, is fine. No, tell us what bad things you did. Oh in my Columbus. God, I just, I just turned the fucking lights. Can you do? You, do you look? Do you look around? John Marco, I'll be honest. I did. I don't know. I don't know that we've ever had those lights on. What are you talking about? I never noticed We have them, them on every time. We're still recording. Okay. Russell, tell a story. No, what are you going to apologize for? It's going to take two seconds for you to, to... Sounds like somebody should apologize for not turning on the light. Okay. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like how you get so annoyed that I don't like carrying the conversation. Um, uh, okay, you're back. Here we go. What are you going to apologize okay, for? Okay, so I have a temper. Yeah. And so I hurt my arm. I went, I was working out. Wow. And uh, I was doing these like uh, single arm, I don't know what they're called, but they're, they're very specific. You stand with like the bench, so it's isolating the bicep. And I think I overextended. Wasn't that heavy of a weight. Never thought I'd get hurt. And I heard a noise. Wouldn't have been that heavy of a no, weight. I know how much it is. It's lower than you think. Yeah, I'm looking at these arms. <laughs> I'm sitting and right here. Yeah. <laughs> I heard a, I heard a noise. Like I it, it really like like what the fuck just happened? I dropped the weight. And so I was in a bad mood. Very bad mood. Did you feel noise out or no? It was like I, I mean, Yeah, I, I it was like <laughs> Was and it came it was, out of, Are you sure? No, it, it was like it was like it was like a it was like a shifting of like tendons and bones like a <laughs> That was more accurate. <laughs> Okay. And sure. And sometimes I don't know if it made a noise out loud or like I heard it through my body. Yeah. Have you ever done something to your body and you heard a noise? Like you a said, spirit oh. noise. Yeah. 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 No, I think I know what you mean. And a bad mood. Bad mood. I'm in. I'm in Ohio. I'm trying to find. Uh, you stop working out. You leave. I stop working. Well, I, I then I'm like, well, can I still do this move? Okay. Did you can keep I do this move? Yeah, working out? Yeah. I, not. Not. I, I found. The, I could do push-ups. It doesn't hurt to do a pushing motion. Just a pulling motion. 
So I've been <laughs> I've, I've been working out. I uh, I know it's bad, but I'm going around. I'm walking to find a icy hot or you know all these things that I've never really used before. Ben Gay. Ben Gay. And uh, yeah, we Ben Gay. I'm walking <laughs> in <laughs> Columbus, <laughs> and uh, some guy goes. I'm looking at my phone, looking at like what it could be happened to my arm, and some guy goes, "Look up." Yeah. And he didn't know I was a New Yorker. Yeah. Because I don't think he expected quite the the complete flip out that yeah. I had on this guy in the middle of the street. Really? I lost my goddamn mind. Were you close to running into him at all? No. Yeah, that's was this I was, was this no. a like was he trying to say like, hey man, hang up and hang out? Yeah, he was yes. like trying to be that's like That's what it was. That, it was like smell the roses. You and I out. and I lost my goddamn mind. And to be fair, I quickly assessed he was not a physical threat to me. Uh huh. Because of all of the weight me. that you can lift. Because, yeah, exactly. If he only knew, <laughs> I only this had guy, one arm. This guy can lift at least seven pounds. So I, very much like my father, just yelled, and and really and and uh, yeah. it was not good. Can we get a can we get a quick yeah, synopsis yeah, yeah. of what you yeah? It's it. not like it's, you know, the thing about like real anger. It's like not funny. It's not charming. It's not cute. It's like a little like what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. Okay. Do it. Let me let me bring myself there acting wise. So all right, say y- he was for he was probably at that door. Okay, ready. Say to me, uh, say so. Let me get. I'm uh, fucking. I'm mad. I'm angry. Hey man, look up. Hey, mind your fucking business. All right, go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, go fuck yourself. John Marco, that is crazy. <laughs> Police could have been called. That is such a wild reaction to that. In Columbus, of all. Don't- pla- don't say look no, up to someone. It's crazy to say it. Especially you don't if you're know not what I'm running, going through. If you're not running into him. It's it, yeah, I didn't run into him at all. I mean, you. It is. It's a. It's a very. It's an irritating thing. Very much so. It's very funny to just to have that man accidentally poke a bear that he did not me, know let, he was about wait, to. Poke. I do, exactly. I do have. I do have a, a, a similar situation this weekend. Okay. I had a friend who was in town. She came and saw the show. And she and her mom were, they drove in, parked in the city. We went out for a drink afterwards, and uh, I thought they left. And so I was waiting for my Uber, and they had gotten their car. Anyways, this other car comes down the street, honks. I'm like standing in the street waiting for my Uber, but not like out into the street, just a little bit in the street. This car kind of slowly comes and honks, I think saying, you're in the way. It's my friend, but I didn't know it was my friend mm-hmm. being like, hi. And I was like, I was like, you have plenty of room, go around. Like I yelled. And she was like, called me and was like, Did you that was me? And I was like, Oh. oh. And she's like, fun. that what she's like, what did she's like, that's who you are insight. when you're not trying to when impress me. Yeah. <laughs> that's who you are when that's you don't you think are, you you're need just alone out of a person. Yeah. Like, There's plenty of room, go around, just like screaming at a uh-huh. random car. Uh-huh. And not even thinking anything. You know, you're just like in New York, just like, you know, you yeah, you just do that. But it is crazy to go other places and do that. People don't like it. I called a man a dipshit uh, on the way here. Like on like, the way here, like two minutes uh, before. You, so you already know each other. <laughs> uh, what happened? I just was. I was biking uh, on. You know, there's the Clinton. Uh, Clinton that as it crosses Delancey, there's a two way bike lane. Yes. Anyway, I was in that two way bike lane, and and a guy was walking. Just like, you know, jaywalk. I don't care. I break the law all the time. But he was jaywalking. And to me, it's like, if you're breaking the law, then be aware of what you're doing. I don't care if you're doing something. I run reds. I split lanes. Like, that when I'm biking. But I know who's around me and what's about to happen. And so he's walking and he just wasn't looking. And I, from, you know, 50 feet away, I'm going, heads up, heads up, heads up, heads up. And he just wasn't looking. And I got, and, and. When people don't pay attention, then I buzz by them. Then I like, yeah. I don't. I don't try and get out of their way. I go close to them, Ooh. knowing that like yeah. I'm in full control. But I'll, I'll like, I'll stay where I am. Yeah. And as I went by, I went, "Hey, dipshit, look where you're going." If if I had, was on a moving vehicle and like was able to get away from the person, I'd be yeah, saying yeah. Oh, all sorts. Oh, of yeah. I yell at people on my bike constantly i yeah. i yeah 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 it's the most it's the most incredible feeling in the world and people yell at me when i do stupid shit and i'm always like yep you were right you were yeah. i totally deserve to get yelled at yeah yeah well so what happened with this guy 
Yeah, did he say anything back? Or I think I made a positive change in his life, and he learned how to mind his own fucking business. This is the downside. One, two, three. Downside. downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi. Welcome to The Downside. I, uh, By the way, if you're a fan of the show, join the Patreon, patreon.com slash downside for our live episodes. Uh, that Russell is sometimes on unless some emergency happens in his life and he has to bail last second. Um, we're so happy to have you. So happy to be here. Lot, lot, lots to to discuss and and talk about. You, uh, you just well, let me just say about you. you I mean, you're a stand-up comedian. We've worked together. You, you, you still on the Tonight Show? Or you're done. Not on the Tonight Show anymore. Uh, hey, uh, was there in 2020? Uh, I was looking for your name in that uh, that article that came out. <laughs> but I uh, didn't see anything. Didn't see anybody's name. Uh, was was it an anonymous article? Yeah. 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 All the sources were. I would talk about it more, but I don't want to make you yeah. put you in an uncomfortable position. Um, but uh, very interesting. Oh, I mean, we can talk. We, we can? can. Sure. All right. I'll be like, there might be times where I'm like, I'm not gonna go into that. Sure. But. Sure. Uh, did you read the article? I did. I think. Let me say my my. <laughs> you know when you're like felt uh, like you the read confidence it? of. Yeah. A <laughs> Let me try to say like my. <laughs> My blunt, like okay, not good. trying to be in the right. Uh, so much, so much than many things I say, it's like, well, this is the correct moral position according to social media. I didn't think any of the the things that were mentioned in the article were particularly beyond the scope of, oh, it's a tough work environment and could be more pleasant. Nothing, nothing that I saw was like cross some like crazy line. Yes, and. I read it and felt like, oh, the way the article frames this workplace feels like uh, it's just a tough workplace. I'm like, hey, folks, like, yeah, uh, late night is stressful and, and you know, grit your teeth a little bit more. And it it uh, the, the article doesn't. I would say does not accurately represent the experience. I would say like the 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 scarring that people report in the article is representative, and then the way the article frames why that scarring happens, you're Got like, it. why are you so bruised? Yeah, yeah. there's there's like the, I feel like the article. Now I am remembering. I did read it. It felt like they didn't go into very specific things. And so to me, that says it's that hard like, if it's anonymous, you're like other, yeah, otherwise it'll be clear what, what's right, and that just people didn't want to talk about specifics. Yeah, but what it what it turned into was this article where uh, it just was sort of, it was it was sort of down the middle of like, it's tough. Yeah, there, yeah. And it, it, there was some people being like, oh, this is as I was with a, a, my Also, opener. the more I'm getting into this, I'm like, ah, maybe I shouldn't really <laughs> tell you about I, this. I totally gave you I know, no, I know but, you did. But I, I was with a, then I'll, 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 I'll leave the charges, but, but I was with uh, my opener, Ty Colgate in Bloomington, and he just had some great points. He said basically, like, it said when, when Jimmy Fallon is in a bad mood, uh, it's a tough work environment. It's like, well, yeah, he's the guy, and I'm sure when he's in a bad mood, it's tough. And and I listen, I don't know this guy, and I haven't been booked on The Tonight Show, but there is a degree of, like, you got to be on every day. I don't know why anyone becomes a late-night host. It's crazy. I don't, like, I understand, like, if you have to but when people like colbert do this i'm like you have the world in front of you in terms of what you wanted to do and you wanted to like every day have to be a very specific kind of like positive and every day you got to do extra interviews and extra announce the golden globes it's a lot oh it's an insane job and uh, i mean <laughs> yeah you have to have the the light on behind the eyes constantly and if you can't have the light on behind the eyes, then you have to force it. Yeah. And so if it ever feels like the light behind the eyes is forced, it's like, yeah, it's because it's this absolutely nightmarish job. Um, no, it's yeah, yeah am, it's 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 I am I just, realizing when, when you start that working I in this business, thing. <laughs> when you start working in this business, I, I think what happens is you hear stories about everyone, every everyone being a jerk. Or someone being, or like a story where someone yelled at someone, or like I've heard a story about another late night person like yelling at a, a warm up person, and you're like, oh yeah, this is. But here, here, here's what I will say: working at the Tonight Show was the worst year of my life, bar none. <laughs> Hollowed me out as an individual, scoured out my confidence in a way that it took a full year to recover from afterward. Wow. 
I remember leaving the show. This is what I'm trying to say. This is what I mean. This is what I'm sort of dancing around by saying, like, the article says people are people leave really traumatized, but it doesn't really explain why people leave trauma. Like it yeah. doesn't explain. And I actually have a whole treatise about like what's going on. That's not, that's not even, I don't think like politically incorrect. It's just 45 minutes long and I don't need to make it the, the whole podcast, but it's the, the way the show, basically it's just that it's the only show that tapes. Th- this is, this is one part of a million elements, but it's the only show that tapes five days a week. They make more produced comedy than any other late night show. Mm. And writers are the producers and there's no core writer's room. It's all, we're all writing individually. And so it means that the show is this like huge machine that's sort of like rolling down a hill too fast to stop it. And by 5 p.m. every day, a show does get taped. And so, and and it, no, there's no stopping it to be like, Hey, let's fix a lot of the shit that's making this workplace really, really difficult. That's making this workplace particularly difficult, more difficult than a lot of other late nights. Does it need a bigger staff or just less? You think that this many shows is unsustainable? Period. Uh, no, no, no. I think there's different organization that could that that uh could benefit it. There's, I think. Uh, look, I think Jimmy is incredibly talented. I think he would rather be the talent than the boss. And unfortunately sure. he has to be the boss. Sure. And I think he's fine with that. But like, or, or I mean, I think he understands that. But like, I, I think that there's a lot organizationally that goes on behind this, the scenes to make the place very, very difficult to work. But then it's still like, yeah, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna are we gonna stop it at eleven thirty in the morning when we have to get when there is an audience loading in at three thirty and then at five the cameras are gonna turn on? No, yeah. we can't stop this. We can't stop the you know, the the rock is just gonna keep rolling down the hill over and over and over. And so that I think that's what the article didn't really capture is like, no, it is a it's it, it truly I remember leaving that. Uh, leaving the show, and I think I, I don't think I was particularly good at the job. Like I, I, I would never say that I, 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 I had a, I had a bad time there, and I don't, and I think I was fine. But it's like I, I wasn't a, a an amazing star writer there at sure, all. Sure, it's just specific. Um, it's very specific, right? Uh, the the what everybody said. Everybody says like that's a job that you almost want to be bad at because it you know like because uh, it's this very specific skill yeah. and if that's the thing you're good at you know whatever. I, I don't quite. First of all, I think there are people who are incredibly talented at that at that kind of writing, and I'm very jealous of that talent. And also, I think that I still have enough internalized like self hatred about that job that where I'm like, yeah. but if I was better, I would have been better at the job. You know, like it's yeah, very or, hard for sure, me to or. feel like no, it's gonna be bad at the job, but. I left that job and I remember in the like couple months after being like, okay. Uh, also, I want to say I got fired from the job, which everybody does. 35 people have washed through those doors in like three or four years. Like it's a crazy yeah. that like, that's a thing that doesn't show up in the, the article. Yeah. Yeah. The turnover is really, really crazy. And, uh, and that's unlike other late night shows. I really don't know if I should be saying this on the air, that's but okay. I think, we, no, I think, I think but, again, I think, I think all I think, of this is fairly yeah. public, but that's all fair. Yeah. Public. But I think the article, what the article did is that, it it made it go like this the it's it's like the the guy you know who's famous in power he's the problem as opposed to like this is a whole machine that is putting everyone in rough places the article like tried to slant it in a way that i think was a, just a little bit uh, purposeful that that wasn't fair to like the whole enterprise it didn't explain the inner workings and people outside of the system they just don't always know it's such an intricate system yeah yeah, I hear am I, you. Am I gonna? Is this a? Is this terrible? You have not said anything no, that has gotten me anything. super excited to post. Them, so I know it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. I mean, like I remember leaving that job, and and uh, be also what I, for people who aren't aren't familiar with late night, getting fired is the same as just not getting your contract renewed. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, and that's just like Hollywood just uses the term getting fired as like we band it around. Whereas yeah. my like real life friends, a picture when I'm like, oh yeah, I got fired. They picture me like being walked out with a banker's box and my like, you know, photo yeah. of my frame photo of my husband or whatever. And, yeah. and uh, Jimmy being like, I'm going to do an impression. You're not going to like mean boss. <laughs> 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 so, and I, and I, yeah, no, I, it's, it's a, it's a, it is a really particularly hard workplace. Yeah. Um, I learned an insane amount. It changed my life for the better indelibly. I think there's a degree of like devil wears Prada ness to it of like you do that job for a year. You can, and I don't want to say like you can go anywhere. Cause it's not like I have gone anywhere, but like, <laughs> or, 
<laughs> you do that job for a year, <laughs> you can. You can be on this. No, I've, I've always <laughs> You can be about sitting on John Marco's yellow chair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, SNL is not in the cards for my lifetime, but I always think like that would that what I hear from that work environment, it would be a, a nightmare for me personally. Maybe I'd be more socially capable now, but like all these late night things, they sound really stressful to me. They seem like the reason I became a stand-up comedian is because I don't know how to function in those intricate systems. I think I would collapse. Yeah, and I do think, I mean, my experience of going to The Tonight Show was that um, I didn't realize how much, uh, how much late night shows pull so much more from the UCB sketch improv world than yeah. the stand-up world sure there's all there are always our stand-ups there but it really it, there's there's way 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 more sketch and improv people and i do think that sketch improv people versus stand-up people are sort of a different breed uh, uh-huh. uh the, you know in the same world but like yeah they it, i do think that there is a degree of like consensus building versus like fuck you i'm gonna have a hot yeah. take that i disagree with you sure and it sure. doesn't even matter if my take is wrong is objectively wrong if i can defend it in a funny way that's the most important thing yeah yeah that's a stand-up stand-up is like a loser fuck you you know L- loner is what i meant to a say loser. <laughs> a loser. wow a that loser. was a real yeah. Yeah. yeah real freudian slip there yeah real freudian slip is it true that your therapist called you by the wrong name yes twice multiple times and how long had you been with that therapist only a few months but but okay. it was over zoom uh, so my name is on the screen. <laughs> How did you react the first time? I didn't say it either. I didn't say anything either time. Which, honestly... Was it a close name? Was it like Carol? She said Zoe. Zoe, okay. And, yeah, I, I'm trying to figure out whether I need more therapy because then I could have actually uh, directly confronted her about it or whether that is therapy working yeah. and I'm letting things go. You well, know? it is hard because you're like, how do you do it without being like... Ex- like I guess you could just say my actually my name is Chloe. Yeah, that's the you called me Zoe. Uh, <laughs> but I I wouldn't say it either. You know me, I would be like Can you also I mean then I just dumped that therapist. I was like Yeah, I but the or, second time. or you work it into like a story that you're telling them and be like You would do so a third I met, person I met, like I met, I met him and I was like my name is Russell and uh you know like <laughs> And I'm walking down the <laughs> street. I'm walking down the street. Like, and, What's wrong uh, today? <laughs> oh my god, my my mom, she yeah. keeps calling me Zoe. She's like, and I'm like, <laughs> you named me. No, not Russell. passive aggressive like that. Like passive aggressive, like you know, just finding a way to say your name. You know. Yeah. And I guess it you was- should be in therapy. By the way, <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. We all should. It gives- you say it like you, you don't believe that. You don't believe that. What you don't believe that he's, you should be in therapy, or you don't believe just, that we should He doesn't do therapy. He's 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 like one of these. He's I'm, on the. I gotta tell you, he's on the. Lip. I didn't go back to therapy. I, 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 here's the thing. Here's the thing. Russell, I'm going to be on your side. In this. I, it feels I think I'm fine. stressful to me. I, one of the biggest stresses in my life is finding time to do things. I feel like, especially right now. Uh, and I, and I, oh, and I know it's just like you have to build it in. You have to blah, blah, blah. But just in my head, if putting one more meeting or one more thing on the thing feels so stressful to me that I would be stressed about just having it no matter what i would be saying in i'm it. just trying to think the last time you texted me oh my god i just rewatched girls in its entirety <laughs> i think that was two weeks ago no i <laughs> we watched it when it came out and i watched it again i was like i think i like i hated and it and how is he ever gonna find time for therapy <laughs> when he's busy rewatching girls for the eighth time like everything in life when you when i'm rewatching sopranos or girls or any other hbo show that is that is that is time that i am doing work and that's on TV. Does uh-huh, that make sense? Uh-huh. I can't watch therapy. That is I can't watch therapy and or can't do therapy and be watching the Sopranos. I did just watch <laughs> the Sopranos again too. But I I I can't do both it's of those. It's a huge things. show. Like all things in life, it seems insurmountable until you say this is just a necessary part of life and suddenly it's able know, to fit in. I just in. don't want to. Like what what are you waiting for? What are you waiting Why for? Why do you think you need therapy? No, because he thinks I need it because so I'll respond to him more, probably. You think <laughs> that I'll go to my therapist and they'll be like, wow, I'm suddenly good at texting John Marco back. Like, is that what you like? I don't know. No, for your own good. Everyone needs a little bit of therapy. I, you don't think you have any behaviors that you go, this is not good. No, of course. Of course. Okay, I'll go. But this is the at every day at 5 p.m., a show has to be taped every yeah, day. Yes. Oh, you gotta oh, go to so rehearsal. It's me. I'm the reason. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to therapy. Yeah, what are you gonna? You know, yeah, yeah, how are you gonna yeah. work that in? Anyways, um, um, yeah, I don't go to therapy. I think I'm perfect. 
I don't think anything's wrong with well, me. Well, good. Then let's I've go never, on to the topic of your Edinburgh show. I've never done anything bad in my life. What was the name of the show again? <laughs> Cheat. Cheat. But what was it about? It was about how I have a history of cheating in almost every relationship I've ever been in. Not all. Now, but almost. cheating is more of Russell's thing than mine. <laughs> Let's yeah. let's real quick before before we go deep. Have you have you ever been cheated on? N- no. Okay. Did you ever cheat? No. Ever gray area? No. No. But I've not been. And in how is this Russell's many... thing? Yeah. Oh, it's it's a he's joke. joke. I, I he, do. His I... thing is I'm a bad person. Ah. It's like because he's so good. That's the John irony Marco of joke, it. You know. Uh, if people only knew. So I. Well, tell me tell me your thing. I I have I have like the the closest I think. I come to it, but but let's. You're the guest today. I. Uh, when was the first time you cheated? College, sophomore year of college. And d- was it uh, in cold blood? Is that the phrase that means, or was it premeditated? Cold blood. Was it like? <laughs> were you like? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think just, if you've been cheated on, I walk you into in I walk into blood. a bar, my eyes go black. <laughs> I, I just point to somebody and I say, you, you. fuck me right yeah. here, right now. <laughs> I come out of a stupor 10 minutes later. What happened? Where am I? Who's the president? I think it should be like f- a cheating in the first degree, cheating in the second degree, cheating I in the third degree. I agree. I think that there are shades of it. Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. So was this, so you were, you were uh, uh, dating someone? Yes. I was in a long distance relationship. Oh. Mm. No, so the, here's the thing. I That's think second degree uh, automatically. Automatically. Sec- automatically. Second degree automatically. Yeah. Second degree. Um, I and I and I always held myself. This is the. I just think that we're talking about degrees. I'm not saying I haven't cheated a lot, uh-huh. but I always held myself back from full PIV sex outside of relationships because to me that was like my justification. That was my line that I would draw. How long did it take you to get PIV? Because it took me about three seconds. Wait, say 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 what it means. One more time. <laughs> P-I-V sex. P-I-V. Oh, point. Wait. Yeah, guess. Please, please guess. What does it mean? (laughs) P-I-V sex. Well, I I know P-O-V. You know, it's not. Okay, so. So so you understand another acronym. I also know (laughs) W-W-E. What's P-I-V? I don't know. Keep going. Come on. P-I-V sex. Guess. I don't know. I'll give you $100. No, I take it back now. It's too late. P-I-V sex. What could be? in vagina. There we go. (laughs) No. What? Pussy in vagina? (laughs) Penis in vagina. (laughs) (laughs) Pussy in vagina. Penis in vagina. Russell. Yeah, listen. May I ask? (laughs) You and your wife. (laughs) Pussy in vagina. (laughs) Um, I I gotta be honest. I'm not. Wait, can I can I ask who you fuck? Yeah, (laughs) my wife. <laughs> you, you time to time. Sure. Pussy in vagina. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like God. Is that intended. how you do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh my God. Um. Uh, penis and vagina. Penis you've and never. Vagina. You've never done a uh, penis and vagina cheating. That right. That was always my line because and because I was like and I know that the line is arbitrary but to me it was like uh this was some kind of justification I was holding myself back in some way I think I like br- you know crossed the line very early to and I, honestly. I think people cheat in high school. People cheat in college all the yeah. time. So I think I crossed the line probably at the same time everybody did, but then I just kept I kept getting away with it. I kept not ending relationships when I should have, yeah. learning that it was just easier to cheat than to end the relationship. Do you think it would make a difference to uh, Nicole? Mm-hmm. Let's say let's say Josh Gad gets sick one night, and the guest is uh, who's who who slept with Eric Andre uh, for like a hot uh, Emily Ratajkowski. <laughs> Emily Ratajkowski. She came to a comedy show. I did. She said it was funny. Uh, so Emily Ratajkowski is, <laughs> is the producer. Yeah. And goes like, wow, you're so good. Uh-huh. And you 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 make her a drink in your dressing room. <laughs> and you make out. Uh-huh. Do you think there's a difference to Nicole if you just made out with her or if you had traditional pussy and vagina sex? <laughs> I <laughs> Good old I Christian reproductive. Do you, do you think Nicole like would be like more forgiving of one than the other? Probably. Yeah. But I don't know if you just kiss too. That's kind of a weird. That's <laughs> I mean, at that like, point, it's like, gee, I'm married to a loser. Yeah. I'm married to a stand up comedian. <laughs> like, you didn't fuck her. Are you out of your mind? Yeah, that would be. I, uh, in some ways, that's weirder to just kiss. It's like, what? I'm married to a cuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I got yeah, cucked yeah, yeah, by yeah, a cuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think, Toba? 
I mean, it's not good. It's definitely not good either way. I don't think the result, whatever the result would be, would be much different. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's like in that case. I think the line is. You should try is, and fuck Emily Ratajkowski. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Cut she that out. Cut funny. that out. <laughs> yeah. She, wow, she was, I love finding a thing that John Marco whoa, whoa, can't whoa, respond whoa, whoa. to. <laughs> she was there. Well, she was there when Emily Ratajkowski okay. said, "Good show." Okay. And and uh, yeah, I don't think any. I don't think it would make much of a difference. I think if it was a. I think it was a hand job. Over making out, I think it would be like hand job. It's like more impersonal. Finger just if Emily Ratajkowski just gave if, me a hand job. Is it no it, kissing involved? Sure, kissing is too intimate. Said, hey, <laughs> just jerked me off. I think I think that would be more okay with that than kissing. Came back off stage. <laughs> off stage. Um, what about fingering. Oh, it's tough to rank these, but yeah. but. <laughs> But you, but it's sort gotta, of. But you kind of set up the game gotta. here. But it is I mean, it feels, sort feels of your active. idea to rank. It feels them. more active. Yeah. If I just <laughs> held my hand there and she did all the work, <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. It's, it's not very, good. No, it's very bad. Yeah. It's very, very, very bad. bad. It's it's. I, look, I think, and I I think that there are. I talk about this in the show. I think that there are absolutely shades of cheating. And I actually think so. Like there are relationships where I had there's an or there's a relationship where I had an emotional affair and nothing physical ever happened, but I count it as I cheated yeah. in that relationship. See, that's tricky. Dan Dan Savage, who who we interviewed once, he he's been complaining on Twitter how like there's all these like different terms of like micro cheating and emotional cheating. And for him, the way he was painting it was like, okay, well now you've just set up a world where everything is cheating. Like like you've gradually uh, created. Um, Almost like a religious, like, well, then you shouldn't even talk to other men. You shouldn't have dinner with another. Like, you've created just all these lines. Sure. So what so, do you mean emotionally cheating? I th- I mean, to me, it's where, like, I functionally made another person my boyfriend in all elements other than sex. But, like, for every, e- e- every success, he was the person I shared it with, not my boyfriend. Every, uh, like, moment of upset, I went to him for comfort, not my boyfriend. So oh, Am I emotionally cheating with you? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Huh? I mean, but to me, no. There's intention behind. You know, there's a you. Also, you know, like in your head. That you know what's this, yeah. This that's the, it's kind line. of to me the porn. The right. What is the like the the Supreme Court thing about porn where it's like it's hard to define, but you know it when you see it. That's how I think about cheating. To me, it is when you make a person feel safe and then you pull the rug out from under them, and that like I think that that is. I am not saying cheating is good, but I do th- also in my show. I've had people. I've so many times. I've had people. It's always men walk out. Or, uh. Wi- hold on sorry let me start the sentence again S- women walk out of my show and go oh my god you've said every thought that is in my head uh and i've just never been able to say it out loud because a lot of the show is not about cheating a lot of the show is about like it's about insecurity and desire and and connection and how you see yourself and how you struggle in a relationship and how do you measure a relationship what is what is good enough what is settling yeah when do you right like i have spent months years in relationships going is this good enough it doesn't feel good enough, but am I an asshole for saying that this wonderful person is not enough for me? Yeah. Mm. So then I should just actually be okay because there's nothing perfect except it doesn't feel like enough to me and then it rinse and repeat, right? Like, the show is about all of those intricacies. It's not just about, you know, like, hey, one time I doinked a guy or whatever. Sure, yeah. sure. But, uh, so women walk out and are like, it, it, the most common reaction I get from women is, is being like, oh, I th- this so much of this is a, th- a thing that I've thought that I've never felt... It, the like Nicole should see the show ability to see out loud right she's uh, certainly frustrated <laughs> uh no i'm kidding no she's uh <laughs> you should fuck emily, emily Rad- you should fuck emily radikowski you should fuck emily radikowski i should kiss her intimately you for 30 kiss- minutes straight you should make you should and make intense one more eye thing, contact you know, with her just hands on her shoulders as we kiss for 30 minutes yes. straight yeah behind the yeah. neck yeah um but but men i've had so many men walk out and not many but a handful and be like oh i want you to know that like what you are talked about in the show is actually pretty tame because i basically have a pattern where like i kept crossing boundaries but i never i never had like a second family degree you know like i i and i was never married i don't have kids so like there are the stakes are way higher for so many other people yeah in so many other situations and so i i have had people walk out and be like what i've done is so much worse than what you've done but it's that I am the only person who I am finding 
who's willing to talk about it openly, who's willing to talk about their behavior openly. And so many people cheat. So many people cross of lines course, all the time. Of course. That's such yeah. a big – where I feel like it just much – I just imagine some people hear you talk about it or hear the premise of the show and go, fuck you, right out the gate. Absolutely, absolutely. Because to talk about it is to make it acceptable, even though it's already happening. Absolutely. Even though it's already happening. Absolutely. Or like the only time people find it acceptable is if the person is now in a good relationship that they were they were cheating they cheated and found the right person right. like it has to be this thing where the then ending, we like turn a blind eye to whoever yeah, got like, hurt no it's fine it worked out how it needed to work out and in all other cases yeah. we just want to like stick our fingers in our ears and go yes. la 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 yes. until it happens to us and in that case then it's very very painful and then it's black and white and i'm not i'm not saying it's not painful i'm not saying what i did is good i'm not condoning cheating at all to me it's just like yeah, we've told teenagers to stop having sex for decades. And guess what? Teens get pregnant all the fucking time. Like, it's not, it, it, pretending it's not there. Did you watch White Lotus? Nothing. Yes. So, White Lotus, it was very funny because this, do you watch season two? Yeah. It was just very much like about gender. I think uh, the different yes. perspectives. And sometimes they felt like the episode would end and Tova would turn to me and be like, So, what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> and, but I think I, I had this realization of with the older man. Of like the you grandpa, know, the, the grandpa, where there's everyone's talking about uh, non uh, ethical non monogamy, all these things, and I'm like, in a way, they had those things back then too, totally. where there were married couples. They didn't, they they didn't put words to it. I mean, our generation certainly we like to talk more than other generations, but it was like plenty of wives yeah, knew their husband how many was cheating exactly. Yeah. But everyone, but people knew, right? And like, I think about my dad, and I'm like, I think my dad inherently is not built for monogamy. And the, I wonder if there was a world where he could have discussed that or found someone who was okay with what he was. But when my mom found out he was cheating, he said, this is who I am and I'm not going to change. Right. And it's like, there is a part where it's like, yeah, my dad wasn't into monogamy. Is there a world where he could have had a healthier version right. of a relationship? And the question is like, the the question for me that I wind up coming back to myself is like, okay, am I, is it that I'm just not into monogamy? Is it that I am into monogamy, but I've never actually been able, I've never been in a relationship where I'm honest about a lot of the other things, like a lot of my other dissatisfactions, either with myself or with the relationship. We're sorry, sorry, honest to myself or honest with the other person. Like, there's so there's there's no it's all just tiny little dials that we're turning tiny little degrees left and right and up and down and there's no clear answer there's no perfect world there's there are there are some cases where it's like oh yeah uh i see this is i kind of bristle at that and i love dan savage but i kind of bristle at the idea of like well now we're setting up this world where you can't even uh talk to a man you know like you can't even be friends it's it's like totally puritanical because it's like no, you fucking know. You, we all fucking know in our guts what is what is yeah. unkind, what is cruel, what behavior is cruel that you can get away with because they're not going to find out. But you know that inherently it is cruel, and that if they found out, it would be really fucking painful. And that like you are kind of withdrawing in the relationship because you're committing this like silent cruelty. Or what is like, ah, whatever, if my husband was here, you know, I'm, I'm not married, but like if my husband was here at this party and he saw me flirting with this guy, he'd be like, oh, you guys are really getting along, huh? Yeah. And we'd be fine, right? Like we all yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone knows. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah, I hear it. Oh, let, let's go to the story. I want to hear the story. So, so you were dating someone for a couple months. It was long distance. How did you meet originally if it was long distance? Uh, we competed in co- college speech and debate together. Okay. Sorry that uh, I have such uh, raw sexual magnetism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, what was it that intense of a relationship, or was it like you met up? Like, how often did, had you seen each other? Oh no, it to- it was intense in that it's like we're college theater kids. Uh huh. You know, it's like yes, we we lived at, we lived far apart, but like freshman year, we would see each other. We started dating freshman year, and then. This happened sophomore year. I like visited him over the summer, and you know we it's like we're talking all the time. It's just like we're you know teenager or he was twenty or twenty one or whatever, and I was nineteen or whatever it was. I had a girlfriend at the end of uh, junior junior year of high school, and it was like I, I was in love with her, and we sent each other poetry for four months, and we didn't have sex, but we both went to like summer camps. So we were like we were gonna make it through the summer camps, and she ended up like hooking up with a counselor at a summer camp. But I remember I went to my summer camp and. The moment I like got there, I, I was like in love with her. And the moment I got there and I was like alone with other people, I was like, oh, I can't. 
I can't possibly totally. not. Yeah. And thank God, I mean, looking back, thank God, she ended up like calling me and breaking up with me over the phone and that let me let me go. But I just remember being young and you're at a new space and you're like alone with another oh, person. You're like, old oh, and you're at a yeah. new space and you're with other people. I mean, and sure. Like, I, I to me, the idea that not 90 percent of people chafe against these kind of bounds or 70 percent whatever like i think there are people who are who are thrilled with monogamy and who are thrilled to like have to have the decision just made and be done and don't have to think about that decision anymore and feel a lot of safety and security absolutely but i think we frame that as the majority i think we frame it as like you have your girlfriend and you go to you you spend long distance summer camp and like you're in you're really going to be thrilled together and it like doesn't matter that you're in long distance and it doesn't matter that you're young and it doesn't matter that you're exploring things we frame that as the as the like that that is the normal experience and yeah, yeah. i think that is far and away the abnormal experience it's not that it doesn't happen but i think that's the minority sure yeah. i think way more people are like oh I can't I can connect with people and it's not necessarily that you walk out and you're like a live wire but like I think everyone almost everyone has experiences where they run into people and they just like suddenly feel this like zap of electricity and then sure. you have to be like okay now what do I do Yeah and yeah. I just kept making a decision I would feel that zap of electricity also for the record <laughs> there I I had a million times when I could have cheated and I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. What was that first thing with the with the while you were long distance? Like, oh, he was like a. You, was it a? Was it? A, you were thinking about it for a, a, a long time and then you were just like, eh, like it's just like a slippery slope that kind of like the lines were. Or was it a party? You're just like, or just oh, like, yeah, uh, something's like, happening. It was. It was a party, but nothing happened that night. Nothing happened that first night. Uh huh. Um. I held back because I knew that I was I knew that I was supposed to you know uh -huh. I knew I was in a relationship yeah. I had a boyfriend I but it's that was before the words monogamy were like in our you know yeah. lexicon yeah, yeah yeah lexicon yeah um but no it was to me it's that it's that so like and this is what what this is why I did a show about it because it's really too much to capture in just like a short conversation but yeah I think that when you feel when you when you feel unattractive in formative years you develop a scarcity mentality and you like learn that attention from whatever gender you're interested in is the most valuable resource and you don't know when you're going to get that resource again and when you got it you got to fucking jump on it and so i was dating this guy who was very smart and very funny but uh not particularly attractive pretty ugly and smelly uh, uh and uh so many people and smelly. Know he was very smelly that's what you got to help these kids if you have an ugly yeah. kid at least let them smell good for yeah. christ's yeah, sake i don't know yeah. what it was but anyway uh and um, we, and, but to me, it was like the, the, he was. There were elements of him that were very attractive. He was very smart, very funny, very like fun to be around, and um, very competitively successful in college speech and debate. And uh, but to me, that was a scarcity mentality. It was like this is the best you I'm dirty ever going to do. Like speech and debate style, like doing like fast, dirty talking. Yeah, about. hit me with some <laughs> policy, babe. Yeah, talk about the implications of this rhetorical analysis. I, th oh. I think that's why, like, it was it the kind of speech debate where, like, talk really fast and you talk like that? That's blah, 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 blah. debate. That's we did speech debate. Debaters are the nerds. No, have you ever seen, like, you, it looks so stupid. You're like, what is this? I've but that would be funny, a dirty talk. talk, dirty talking, and you're like, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to put my pussy in your vagina right now, and it's going to be really good, and you're going to be. Uh, that, see, those kids, that they, they don't ever have sex. Oh, we sure. We have sex. Yeah. Speech debate, kids. speech and debate. Um. Okay, so so then you hooked up with this guy. Well, but it, so it's so it, it's that like that was a scarcity mentality, right? This is who's interested uh -huh. in me. Okay, great. I, this feels nice to have somebody be interested in me. I'm gonna be with this person, and it's not, and I was interested in him too, very much so. But I think like if I hadn't had the scarcity mentality, which I think so many people have, I think I probably would have left that relationship earlier. I probably would have been like, okay, this is actually not. I'm not, I'm not super into this. Um, and so then I go to this party and I have chemistry with somebody who is like on the, and this is putting it very transactionally and it's not good, but I think this is how a lot of people talk, sure. think, uh, like on the ladder of attractiveness, this guy at the party who I had electricity with was like one rung up, right? He was still, he still looked like uh, a member of the insane clown posse. Like this guy looked like a, I don't know, an enforcer at a We're circus. We're talking three to four. We're not talking. No, we are not. <laughs> right. We, I'm, I am moving from a two to a three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but this guy but he was like 
he smelled so much better. And he, and he was there and we were flirting and it was fun and it's intoxicating to flirt. And so then it's like, here's another scarcity mentality moment. If I leave this, I never get this again. I don't... I didn't have the confidence to know that I would get that again. And now it's like, I'm old enough to be like, oh yeah, I can walk into a bar and flirt, flirt with somebody. Like I can press that little dopamine button if I want, you know, like yeah. I can get the morphine drip if I, if I need, if I need it. But at the time, you know, when you're young, you don't, Yeah. Y- you, you, uh, when you feel unattractive, you don't have that kind of confidence. Can I say that I, I do sometimes think with, we, we both have a lot of, gay friends or he, he's in theater and I started in theater. I do sometimes think like I can, <laughs> the strange to say, I can sometimes with a gay man, like have a flirt sure, in a way that yeah. is like, I would a, say like, that gay man says a hundred percent. You're having a flirt. Sure. <laughs> sure. And we might be having very different just, and I'm sure, I'm sure there's a, there's some gay men who, who have thought maybe something would come out of this, but I do sometimes think I can have that, like that fun of what a flirt you feel is attractive of like, uh, yeah, I feel attractive and I feel like there's chemistry and it's like it's probably one of the I can do it safely. So you're admitting to queer baiting. Yes. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> heard it right John here. Marcos queer Therese. baiting, and I like it. I love it. It makes me feel good. Uh, tempts gay men into uh, hitting uh, on him into, just to make just himself to... feel hot. Uh, wow, John Marco Serez. Uh, I just realized it now. I was problematic like, I was like, yeah. male comedian. Uh, I do. I do flirt, and it's very safe within the context of my my relationship. Oh yeah, safe like... for you to stomp on a poor gay man's heart. Safe for you to look into his eyes and say, yeah. we can't kiss, that's too intimate, but you can give me Ooh, a hand just, job. Just for you to feel good and get some likes on Twitter and things. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, people say that, like, I post a picture where I, like, look okay, and they're like, we know what you're doing. And I'm like, well, yeah, I want to feel pretty. Yeah. Am I... In the in the eyes of men who would love to kiss you? <laughs> we, need a, we need a 500-word notes app apology out of this. So... So then with that guy, you just made out. No, we did more. We we did, we... F and V? Uh, probably. Certainly P in M. <laughs> oh, P and M. Wow. Uh, when I, when I, <laughs> the first person I like, the first person whose, 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 whose genitals we all exchanged things with, we, we, I was so nervous about, we like... Who's the we all? <laughs> we all. <laughs> But I remember the way that we, we talked about it. We were like, because I've always been very like uh, uncomfortable talking about like verbalizing certain things. So we were like, we came up with nicknames for like, what if you touched my, and then we came up with a nickname for like oh. what the vagina was. Can you give us an it? example of what it was? It's so humiliating. Yeah. She came up with it. It wasn't me. No, just say it. It wasn't me. Was it? But she, she, she would refer. Ugh. She would refer to her own vagina as what? I forget the, what the vagina was. All I remember is that my penis was referred to as, as Zeus at some point. Wow. You came up with that name or you came up with that name? No, I did not call my penis <laughs> Zeus. Wow. But we were like, so what would it be? And it was Zeus. like, I feel I, like. Th- 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 we are going to, we have to cancel you at the end, by the end of this <laughs> podcast. Zeus, because it, it had a shockingly long beard. Uh <laughs> No, I don't know why. Zeus because it was it, just random. Zeus Who knows? because it shot lightning. Zeus, I, I, I you must have wow. been reading Greek mythology or something. Something was like, like that. Oh yeah, I, I got a good idea. Zeus, you know? but you don't. Wow. She, what was her nickname? I feel like for you some, keep with the theme of. You don't think it was no. more like it should have been like Cupid for your dick? You know, like a little baby. It, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like for some reason we used other. Body parts like we called her maybe her vagina like an ear like her no ear, like, nightmare <laughs> Zeus and ear hey, will you lick will you hey Zeus is gonna put your shove Zeus in my your ear, ear. I, I <laughs> this poor woman <laughs> this poor is poor she, woman oh my what happened to her so this was this was like so I just started stand up in college like I took a class at Caroline's went back to school did an hour. And it was yeah, like yeah. it was like the dirtiest, like filthiest hour I'd ever. It was yeah. it was every time my I my girlfriend sex. she'll be sucking my Zeus, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, baby, just let me put it in your ear. <laughs> it was it was literally like the first time I. It was like learning about like the first time I came, the first a woman who peed on me by accident and thought like it was all just dirty. It was like a dirty hour. We're about college. to find out that John Marco has been engaging in kink acts since he was <laughs> uh-huh. fifteen. And and so what happened was, 
I I mentioned like the woman who I had first had sex with, and I didn't say her name or How anything. How old were you when you first had sex? Uh, eighteen. Wow. And so, like in in the thing, I I you know, and she had had sex before, and it was just about my failure. It was like I you know I came too fast. It was like it was just just leaning into all these things, and uh, that person saw. I put it on YouTube or whatever. Like and it still exists. I did like an hour in a black box of my theater. You haven't and, taken that down off of YouTube. It's unlisted. It's unlisted. But here's so she saw it and basically like posted like and again, I really felt like it. Oh, it, it I didn't, remember this. Yeah, it didn't like insult her. Sure. That, uh, but it was just like you know, I, I doubt anyone would want to hear. Oh my God, you talked thirty minutes about our sex life on stage. Right. Yeah. And then so she wrote the my other girlfriend from high school and being like just so you know he's talking about this on stage now the other girlfriend i had a bit that was like very crass and harsh and it was a, the the line that i said in it again bad stand up comedy it was like it was about her having a smelly pussy or whatever and it was like i went down there for the first time smelly ear and smelly ear yeah and smelly ear and finding her clit i think the line was finding her clit was like finding a pimple in a truck driver's armpit and again i didn't say her name i was like i was like i was like 20 i just on a stand up class at carolines it killed with them and and so you she- can you are allowed <laughs> Wow. You honestly look. I'm not gonna cancel you for queer baiting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna that. cancel you for calling your dick Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> Saying that finding a clip is like finding a pimple, pimple in, in a, a truck, truck driver's, driver's arm. armpit. It's, it's also, such it's also, a. It's a good visual. I will it's a good say visual. it's insulting to truck drivers. If anything, that's what yeah. I think is the most concerning. It's very classist. Yeah, and very <laughs> classist comedy. You're we're breezing over the woman who it's insulting but, to. But again, I didn't. I didn't name. I didn't do like it was all an abstraction. But like, but she, she like this other girlfriend sent it to the past girlfriend. Was like, he's talking about you on stage. Well, you're and yes, but- and I quickly, thank God, in time, I took it off YouTube. And then that girlfriend wrote me, and this was like, this was like we dated for four months in high school, and it was like a whirlwind romance. And then she st- hooked up with a counselor at a camp, and like broke my heart, and blah 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 blah. But but so I, I didn't have any bad. Seems like the counselor was fine with how her pussy smelled. <laughs> I guess so, and. And she wrote me. She was like, uh, "I'd love to see this clip uh, that this person told me about." And I was, and I was like, "Oh, I was an amalgamation of such and such and this and that." And don't worry about it. And she's like, "Sure, I'd still love to see it." And I never showed it, of course. And you know, if she's followed my career up to this point and is listening to the podcast, she knows now. I uh, and listen, I felt cancel him, cancel him. him. <laughs> but it was, it was just. You know, it was just early. I mean, it was like an early stand-up lesson of like, oh, you can't just talk about everything. And it was so – I never thought in my mind this person would ever see this and connect the dots. And you just – it was an early lesson, an early artistic lesson. Right, a lesson that I have oh. yet to learn because I'm still shit-talking my old job, and I assume that no one will ever <laughs> see this podcast and go, oh, she shit-talks people who pay her money. Anyway, let's keep going. Um, okay. So so you fooled around. Did you tell you you cut so so when did you decide? Oh, so I, I tried so so it was like I I was hooking up with this other guy for like a month and then I remember driving home for Thanksgiving and being like in the I remember in the car being like I got to break up. I got to end this really. Like and I had already been debating for a while. I'd been yeah. unhappy in the relationship for a while. And I was like I got to figure out whether um I, I I just have to I just have to do it. But I had learned at the point at that point I had learned that you're not supposed to break up with somebody over the phone. You're not supposed to break up with somebody over text. And we were going to see each other over Christmas. And so sex about long distance. So it's like the the reunion. Well, there's no right. There's no there's good. No good. The time. answer is fucking do it over the phone. Yeah. But I was I was too young to know that. Right. I had like internalized the wrong lesson here. The lesson of like the kinder thing is to look them in the eyes. And so I. Uh, waited until Christmas, and I said, "Hey, I would like to break up." And then he said, uh, "He said, no, let's give it, uh, let's give it four more weeks. And if it's bad by the end of the four weeks, then we can break up. But if it's good, then we stay together." Which, in retrospect, what is an is a is a manipulative. Yeah. I mean, like a, that is a very bad response. I didn't know you could say no to <laughs> yeah. a breakup. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I don't think I, not. Yeah, I don't think so. And I think what he. <laughs> <laughs> to to be fair to him, so it, in in fairness to him, I think he was saying like, I would like to give it another shot, 
right? Like, let's try and fix some of the. Th- I don't know that. I don't think we were mature enough to be saying let's fix the problems that are going on. How old let's- are you? Uh, nineteen at that point. Yeah, it's it's it, no. It's looking back, over. you're like it's crazy the things we tried to navigate. To, to navigate, right? Also, in fairness to him, he then for six months after we did eventually break up, a month later, uh, he logged into my Facebook, read all of my messages, and then was logging into my email multiple times a week and reading my emails oh. for six months after. And by his- the way, by the way, that woman who who that girlfriend who told the other girlfriend. When we were breaking up, logged into my Facebook, found a a brutal message I sent to a sure. friend about how much because we were we were already broken up. Right. But like, but yeah, that is that's well, rough. And it and it's like when you're younger, you do fucking bad yeah. things. Yeah, I think this guy is at least was at the time a bad guy. I haven't talked to him in a long time, but I think like I, yeah. I think he I think I think it was sort of in line. The way he like talked to me during the breakup, eventually months down the road, was not good. Right. Like this guy was a was a dude that, who I do not con- who I don't mind. Him, I don't mind talking shit about on a podcast. Yeah. Sure. Him, if people find this, they will know who it is. Like there are there are people who would know who this not, uh, not a lot, but like yeah, there yeah, are yeah. people yeah. who I competed with who would know who this is. And like, hey man, that's a bridge that I don't mind burning. But sure. But that And let me just say, let me just say, for these two women, this I was very young when this all Wow, happened. doesn't want to get canceled. Well, but I do want to say And like, let me just and just for the record, just for the record. Me, just let me say I just want to I just want to clear my name. Here. I look back on all those old relationships though and I'm like there was like, there was like emotionally like it was bad and and I felt like some things but I also look back and I'm like I could never get I look back and I'm like we were well, children. So we that's were the fucking confusing, children. That's the really confusing thing to me, particularly about like unpacking my own specific bad habit in relationships or multiple bad habits in relationships. Cheating is honestly, I think, more the symptom. Like, I think that I think the issues are more like I stayed in relationships. I, the one huge breakthrough that I had in the four months of therapy that I went to, she was like, "Do you think that the reason that you struggle Zoe, to decide? Do you think that the reason Zoe? Do you think that the reason that you struggle to decide to end relationships is maybe because the first time you tried to end a a big serious relationship he pushed back on you and then you caved and stayed together for another six or seven months whatever it was Uh, and i was like oh that's an interesting so it is what's crazy is that like on one hand what we do as kids is like yeah you're fucking kids and you make mistakes and kids do stupid shit all the time and like how could i possibly be saying that a relationship that i had when i was 19 was important and yeah and i on one hand on i fully believe that on the other hand it's like yeah but those are the super super formative experiences and that is where like patterns start to take root yeah. And it's re- it's really thorny. This is another thing where to me it's like we're all it's all just little dials. Like it's impossible to really really pull it apart. And in some ways it is important and in some ways it's stupid dog shit that doesn't matter, right? In some ways it was a year-long relationship in college and who gives a shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um okay, so that's the first time. Because it's crazy that it how how many times how many times are we looking at here? I don't know. Cheating. Really? I, I mean, I've just never. The thing is that, like, yeah, I've I've never gone back and like gone like one, two, three, four. I've never done that. But but the the thing is that, like, by the way I define it, I'm like, oh sure. yeah, there was some like there was one time where I kissed a guy at a party, and it took me years to look back and be like, oh, I f- forgot that I kissed a guy at that party because it was so meaningless that. I like didn't. It was like fun in the moment, and yeah. then I. But I was like out of town, and I went back and like. Oh, I just remembered I had totally. to pull Tova something. <laughs> um, right, so it's like there's that, <laughs> and I look back and I'm like, oh yeah, I guess that was cheating. Then there's times where it's like, oh, I had this huge emotional affair. It's yeah. I to me, it's all. It's the pattern is just that I have perpetually been willing. I have perp- like when I'm faced with a with an an electricity with a person i my pattern is that i always choose to lean into that electricity honestly if anything i'm just like too in the moment i'm too yeah. present uh-huh. yeah yeah huh? I'm too zen too present too too head up yeah you know? yeah too, yeah uh, i'm looking up yeah. too much yeah. i should be looking at my phone and and calling my boyfriend a little bit more yeah. no but it's well that's i think it's just interesting how also, like, I never got found, or I got found out once, and I think if I had gotten found out earlier, yeah. I experienced any negative consequences for my behavior, I'm sure I would have been like, oh, yeah, this is bad. How did you get found out? I just I, learned I to, never, yeah. I got really drunk, and my, my boyfriend at the time found texts. Oh. He, he went on your phone? I have no, I truly was blackout drunk, and I don't know what happened. I don't know if he went on my phone. I don't know if he, like, over. the next day you woke my, up, and, yeah. and how ugly was that fight? Awful. Terrible. I mean, the, the, so bad. And then we stayed together. Did you explain the scarcity mindset philosophy? No. 
<laughs> See, when you think about... <laughs> And you know it's all about attachment styles. And think back to when I was a when I was a child. Anyway, where are you going? <laughs> I uh, so so the one thing that happened. So I, I I was dating someone in college, and then one summer we we went on like a a break, but it was not not well defined, not well defined. But it was like we were going to separate summer things again. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of camps for a straight guy. A lot, lot, and, you, a lot and musical theater camps at that. Right. So yeah. Um, that's money. I, I I met this person at this camp. Emotional money, because yeah, a lot of yeah. gay guys like him. <laughs> <laughs> I met this woman at this camp, and and she was like super out of my league. Like like it. I think a similar a similar like what is happening, mm -hmm. and uh, we so basically we hooked up, and I, I I didn't consider it cheating, but it definitely was like if anything, I was like reverse emotionally cheating with my person i was on a break with like mm -hmm. we were still talking and it was just like bad behavior of, like, messy we were, it was messy 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 but eventually like that that person and i had been seeing each other at school we like stopped talking and i was just kind of dating this person in like a whirlwind summer romance type vibe a lot of whirlwind romances out of this mm -hmm. guy Whirlwind romance i mean summer if i if i had like a son i'd be like for summers high school just be free you know like the camps are camps are not, fun not you women. would you would not a daughter not a daughter. Daughter, I'd say, you stay away. You would turn into the uncle you from the away. Fablemans. <laughs> <laughs> so, so bottom line, I was basically I had like this relationship with this person at the summer camp. We have this final performance. Uh, for the end of the camp, we perform a song, and my uh, ex, I guess from school, surprised me yeah. at this yeah. this show. Uh, you know, you'd have to ask her like what the thought was sure. behind it, but I don't know. I don't think they knew that I was necessarily seeing someone else there. So, so who knows? Couldn't Just have, wouldn't have, unless she have. was there to trap you. Because yeah. I think this was certainly before I had an Insta. I didn't have an Instagram till God late. If I had an Instagram earlier, I'd be so famous by now. But I uh, basically, this person surprised me. I believe I even, you know, hor horrifically introduced her to the person I was yeah. seeing. Yeah. And then in a I'm way, it, trying to trying to prove it's casual, it's nothing actually. W this is just a friend of mine. I, I probably was was like, I probably was in the moment like this is. I don't know if I certainly would have said girlfriend, but I, I wasn't like hiding anything. But I, I it was awkward. It was weird. So then I'm talking to my this person I was seeing from college, my I, ex essentially, and I got a text from the person I had been uh, hooking up with at camp, and she said, "Meet me around the corner." And uh, I don't know if I've ever told the story uh, before, but so I, I'm like weird. I say to this person, I say, oh, I'll, I'll be right back. I go around the corner and she's there and she's like crying. And she's like, you've been cheating on me with this person from your college. I fucking knew it. And I was gobsmacked because I wasn't. Sure. Yeah. I wasn't. And I certainly hadn't known she was coming. I mean, and, and but she was like dead set. Like I was cheating on her, this, that and the other. And uh, I remember I was I was so shocked. I so didn't want it to end. We had like four days left of this camp. And I was like, I, you know, in my mind, I was like, I really would love to keep having sex for four more days before mm -hmm. this is over. Yeah. And I remember I got on my knees in the middle of the street and I was like, I swear to God, I'm not cheating. And there was a cab driver there and there was a woman in the back seat like waiting. And she was like, he's sorry, honey, forgive him, baby. And it was like, it, and, and I was like, thank, thank you. But I don't think you're helping this at all. Yeah. Also and internalized misogyny. <laughs> Patriarchy in action. <laughs> that woman should have been on the ladies' yeah. side. It was like a, this was this was where I I really regret my actions. Where this this woman who was accusing me of cheating like kind of stormed off. We were supposed to like see a show that night or something, and I followed her and basically abandoned uh, your college my college my person. college who who I had like a oh that's an funny. emotionally meaningful relationship with. In in the moment, if I look back, I'd be like, this person is behaving. Uh, absurdly accusing me of something. Wow, sure. I listen. I know I'm going to get your sympathy. You know, we we're, we're, we got to not judge each other here. Uh, if anything, Russell's going to be judging both of us. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but but I basically like I I like left that person there, and then I was so scared 
this person kept thinking that I had, was cheating on them with my college ex, which I wasn't. Right. But like, you know, suddenly I texted that person like, I'm so sorry I abandoned you there. Then she saw my phone. She was looking through my phone. Who, your college ex or the camp? The camp person like saw camp that I texted her. and was like, I knew what you were cheating. I knew it. You, you. And I remember I ended up going to, I went to um, Shetler Studios because I was so scared of her going through my phone. And I made a call on their office phone to my ex from college. Oh and I was like, God. hey, I'm sorry. I can't talk. I know you're in New York. But I'm I'm sorry. Like it was basically I cap- I capitulated to this person's uh, paranoia and and in doing so treated horribly this person this from person college who was important to who you. was important to me. And then they I were both. But th- at that point, they're both important to you. Yeah. I don't know. To me, I'm like I I would be much more magneted toward the person who I had just had who I had been in this intense thing with for the last several months. Like yeah, I think that sure, is sure. But she was behaving uh, sure, and I don't. She was behaving in a way that you have to go, I can't be hurting other people because you're behaving so but irrational. Also her, but her reaction sounds justified. If your college girlfriend shows up knowing that you, you know she doesn't fully know what's going on, shows up to the final performance, I think I would be like, yeah, it's, the fuck is happening? The thing, but the, yeah, but I should be able to say this. I should be able to say this is what happened. It was a surprise and you have to believe me. Sure. But here, basically what, like, I just think all relationships, almost all relationships, are very messy, and we act as if messiness is the outlier, we act as if messiness is not the norm, and it's like, no, messiness is always the norm. The people who have, like, who are happy to just, like, go to Trader Joe's on the weekend and, like, you know, buy bread and then go home at night is, like, that's the outlier, that's the crazy one. But you have, I think, looking back. Also, like, maybe I'm just friends with a lot of, uh, <laughs> maybe <laughs> uh, fucked up artists. <laughs> I just think, I mean, talk about scarcity mindset, or, or or just like, you know, it was just like it was basically a hot person wanted to fuck me at the time, yeah. and I decided Definitely. to value and that above all other Definitely. emotional connections, and that's not good. That's not good. Yeah, but I also but think that's so everyone normal. Gets that. Everyone gets that. Everyone yeah, that's gets that. no, that's the like. <laughs> it's like you know we can pretend that we don't get it. If like, Emily Ratajkowski <laughs> tried Emily to Ratajkowski fuck you even right now, yeah, but no, but but no. If Emily Ratajkowski tried to fuck me and I cheated, no one's feeling sympathy for me. I can't go to. I can't. I can't. That's bad. It it's is bad. no one's feeling sympathy for you. But I. But to me, I guess here's. He, and this is actually kind of. Maybe this is like kind of my message is that I'm never asking about my own behaviors or about anybody who's cheated who's talking about cheating. I've never asked for sympathy, but I do think I've never asked for permission. You know, for like a you know oh p- poor little angel, but I do think that behaviors like that are so much more understandable than how we cast them. Like, I don't think people make crazy decisions. I think people make decisions that like every single domino leads to the next domino. And if you fucked Emily Ratajkowski, I hope you never, Tova, I love you. And I hope that you two are uh, in a a happy relationship for (laughs) years and years and years. And we have all this like full conversation of (laughs) other people beforehand. uh, Olivia Munn, that was the thing. Olivia Munn like tweeted at John Mulaney, like, can't wait to see you tonight at the show. And then it's like you connect the pieces. You're like, wow, it started yeah, yeah. there. To me, it's just that like <laughs> nobody, you wouldn't get sympathy if you fucked Emily Ratajkowski, but people would be like, sure, I get it. It's Emily Ratajkowski, right? Like, that, like <laughs> that's fucked up though. That's bad. I had a father who I, cheated. Constant. I, we've, or we already said it. I, I and and <sighs> there's a degree of like, look, if you want to fuck other people. Just go. You you gotta you gotta have that conversation. Like like, or or like, I, I have I don't I don't if someone if I find out you know that that Russell cheated on his wife, I wouldn't be like, well, fuck you, you're a evil bad person. But I'm like, yeah, that's that's. Let's let's. I mean, with you when you talk about it in the show, it's like if you feel that you're gonna cheat now. I feel, especially with all the reflection that you've had, you should be upfront with that person before you totally do it. Totally. I mean, now basically, it's that like now I am. I have done so much self reflection, and I still have more. It's not that I'm. I'm not. You know, done. Um, I certainly don't need therapy. I'm certainly a hundred percent fine. Uh, but no, no, no. Like I, I've done so much thinking and and metabolizing about my own patterns, and and now I am entering relationships 
and I'm this is sort of lowercase r relationships, but I've had two two men who I have dated have seen the show. Uh and in both cases they were like what one was like uh yep, I've like I have had it, my own experiences where I have cheated and like I get it and our experiences are a little different and like I'm not going to I you know, I'm hopefully not doing it anymore, but like <laughs> I see this. I think it's funny if you cheat on them and like like imagine imagine you're a friend to this guy you're like to my girlfriend cheated on me oh that's so bad how do you, how do you meet her <laughs> <sighs> well she, she's in a show I mean, about how much she cheats <laughs> <laughs> fuck you know what oh god oh. damn it he'd be like i'm sorry man <laughs> that's and the, and my my hope is that like i'm now entering relationships being much more upfront about like what my patterns are what i see what i need and I think m- even more importantly than being upfront with other people, because I've always, f- at, for my entire life, I have entered every single relationship I have been in since that very first b- uh, smelly guy, uh, that saying, I have a history of cheating. I have cheated before. I have a history of cheating. I don't want to do it again. I don't want to repeat it. I have entered every single relationship saying that early. I've never hidden it, which is part of why I'm willing to do this solo show. Like, I've always been, I've been upfront about cheating way earlier than I was doing stand up. Like, I remember my, I used to have a corporate job, and my boss at the corporate job knew that I, like, had a history of cheating. Like, I, uh-huh. I am <laughs> fine, and I don't need therapy. Um, has anyone come to the show and said, fuck you? Nobody has come to the show and said, fuck you. I have had people, I've had a handful of times, I've had people be like, pass on the message, be like, um, my I had a friend with me and they said th- this I've gotten this reaction a couple times. They said that like they have been cheated on. It it was really, really painful. And they said that they were shocked that by the end of the show they didn't hate you. Wow. That has happened multiple times. Because to me it's like, yeah, it's all this it's it's a nuanced conversation and everybody deals with some version of this feeling. And also I am not trying to say cheating is fine we should all do it not at all it hurts people it is i i just think that it hurts people in a similar way that a lot of maladaptive coping mechanisms hurt people and we 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 give a lot of leniency to other when somebody's like a gambling addict and they you know gamble away the family savings yeah we're like he has a problem and it's always a man he has a problem yeah and if somebody cheats and like it that you know until that gambling addict or until a substance a- abuser, whatever, like suddenly fucks somebody else. Then we're like, and that bastard. And it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. how is yeah, that more yeah. hurtful? Sure, it's sure. It's hurtful, but it's, but they're all right. It's all in the same big soup. Anyway, Do you think you get it's my little soapbox more or less sympathy cheating because you're a woman. Do you think there's any difference? I mean, obviously there's different. What do you think the difference is between the way like people view women who cheat and men who cheat? I I mean, I think that there are I, again. Here's the problem. My answer to like all of these is that, and th- this is th- this is a an issue in stand up. My answer to all of these is that like there's nuance. There are cases where I think women are cast much more like as e- much more devilishly, much more sinister. Yeah. That it's like manipulative, and there we're like these yeah. sirens who are who are disobeying the rules. And that if men cheat, th- in there are cases where like people see men cheat as like. Yeah, like men just got these urges and like, you know, they can't really like they can't control themselves and women are supposed to control themselves. And so when they're not, it's that they're manipulating other people. Now, there's an inverse where people are like, oh, men are the cheaters and women don't cheat very often. And so a woman being like, I cheat is actually given is actually viewed with much more. uh, There's like interest and forgiveness and willing to listen to nuance because it seems less. Right. Yeah, totally. I. I, I will say that when I tell women I have a history of cheating, the most common reaction, mo- so far and away, the most common reaction is women being like, oh, me too. So, so far and away, the most common reaction. When I say I've cheated in almost every relationship. I, wow. I'm not saying like the, the you know, it's 90%, but like over half of the reactions I get are women being like, oh, yeah, I've cheated in a ton of relationships too. Do you want to like set up a camera, bring Tova and Nicole in a room? <laughs> Just find out. Find but, out to, the truth. but to me, this is why th- this is why I care so much about this because I'm like, it is fucking Normal. everywhere. I do in my show. I do a I, the only bit of of audience interaction that I do. I say I say round of applause if you've cheated in here, 
And it's always like two or three people in a room of 50 or whatever. Uh And, and I, you know, I joke about how brave they are and, you know, these, Uh these bad people have guts and, uh, and then I go, okay, an easier one clap if you've been cheated on and it's always more every single time and it's yeah. like yeah okay well mathematically that doesn't add up yeah. or the cheaters are too busy to go to one person shows at cheating. edinburgh <laughs> <laughs> yeah they got stuff to do <laughs> people um this now let me just ask uh we're doing okay um do you think your parents getting divorced when you were two they were never married they were never married but they separated when you were two? Yeah, split over one, one and a half, yeah, baby. And did they ever date? Are they married again? Did they get they remarried? They never dated anybody else. And it's the three of us are like still a little happy family. I mean, like, there, there's like, there's certainly issues. Like, now I see that there is a lot of anger between them and a lot of resentment between them that I didn't feel for a long time. But in the same way that like old married couples have that, like, they, they don't, they live very far apart. They live 2,000 miles apart. But like, my dad comes back to Minnesota for Christmas and like you think they ever fuck? Uh people ask that all I truly hate that question. Why? Uh what do you mean why? Why? <laughs> Thank you. No, seriously, why? He's like he, Thank he, you. he thinks no, about no, no, it a no, lot. No. His parents. No, no, no. Fuck no, I, I think why? I, I because my parents date, I have to deal with the reality of of my mom and her sex life. And I think I because they don't, I never have to deal with the reality of my parents and their sex lives. And you so think they do? No, not. I'm sure they used. I'm sure when I was. I'm sure like there were years where they debated getting back together. But they never date anywhere. Like, uh, well, my question: Do you think they're really? getting it anywhere else? No. So you just think they're 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 done. Mm-hmm. They lock their genitals up. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Wow. And if they if that's not true, I don't want to hear any different. <laughs> We have them right here. You, but you're talking about cheating. <laughs> you, 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 you're, you're ex- literally yes, exploiting. Yes, and I cheating. have lines, John Marco. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's fascinating. I think it's fascinating. I wonder if, if who knows? I wonder if, if they, uh, maybe they have their own things that they do on the side that you don't know No, about. no, 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 no. I would know if they were dating. Sure. But I'm saying, like, who's what? to say your dad's not going out and uh, using an app and meeting someone who wants to fuck? 100%. You get a sense from people. Yeah. Sometimes. Wait, you think you you think you know your parents' exact sex life? No. But I think there's Are a, your parents still together or yeah, with people? They're still together. But I feel like there's a general vibe. Like if you're like if you, like can they even use an app? Like, do you know what I mean? Like sometimes there's a there's a vibe of like also depending where you live. You, my dad is technologically you know, illiterate. He still figures out how to use that's apps. True. That's true. Yeah, you know what's funny? For sex? You don't need an app. Yeah, that's true. How how often do you think your parents have sex per I year? Don't, I don't. John Marco again. Why, I don't why want is no one to. curious about this? Because why, is it, why, are, why are you, why are you so, so curious? curious? Because this is why I'm in therapy, and you're too scared to explore. You exist because your dad came I'm, and your mom. I'm, you too, and you both are like I'm fine no, with it. Not me. I'm fine I with it. I don't have to like bird. think about it and like talk to them about it. I'm not and, asking like, like what makes your mom come. I'm just saying like do they have sex? Really sounds like you're asking you what guys, makes his mom come. You guys are so repressed. You're so repressed. Okay, what it, what what are you talking to your mom about? What do you want us? My to My mom's talking? putting it on me. She said the last. She's like this yeah, last guy couldn't think, get it You up. don't think that's the b- issue that's going on? You don't think no. that our parents yeah. have no. like reasonable boundaries you, with us? You have and you're spent- like, my mom keeps talking to me about her sex life, and why don't you guys? Why don't you guys want to know about your mom's you, sex life? You're just externally no, projecting your you, own trauma like, of your mom being like you're so full of shit. Yeah, this guy. You're talking about like exploring and reconceptualizing. And understanding cheating and fidelity and sex and and like, but then our parents and then, no, then it's a black box. Here's the, here's the thing. Here's, the, here's the difference is I'm I'm not saying if they came to me with something and they were gonna right. share it that I'd be like, no, mom and dad. I'm saying like, do I am I sitting at home being like, I wonder when my parents fucked last. How can last you not be curious? How can you not be curious? I don't care. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't come in my head of, of like something I even would think about naturally. Yeah. What if your parents aren't fully satisfied? What if they need something? I, it's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I care? I'm not going to do What am I going to do? I'm going to get involved and be like, you, like, come on, smush them together. Like, what, what the <laughs> fuck am I going to do about them? <laughs> I don't give a shit. Oh, I can't wait for Russell to come home for Christmas <laughs> so he can finally smush our genitals together. Jesus. I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> I just want your parents to be happy, Russell. That's I, I, I think they see yeah, we, they are. We oh, and I'm sure my parents <laughs> are lonely. But again, what am I gonna do about it? Let's go on to our next segment. This has gotta stop. This has gotta stop. Oh, yeah. Should I look at my things? You get at those notes. Should I? You, should I? This pitch? has gotta stop. 
uh, I have a, I have a, this has got to stop that I'll say. So I, I met someone. I'm going to be a little bit vague about it, but <laughs> I, 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 I met like someone who not a big time celebrity, but like a celebrity in my life, certainly that I that I watched many times growing up. And it's just incredible how quickly I met them and it was cool for half a second. And then I was in a conversation with a stranger and I felt uncomfortable and I needed to like get, it was like someone who I admired within seconds. I was like, oh, now I'm talking to a stranger and I'm uncomfortable and I want to leave. And so my, this has got to stop is, is, is meeting, meeting your heroes. That I think it's not just there's... I think and you're the nice, first person to ever say that. But it's, but it's not that. It's not a sense of like, don't meet your heroes because they're, they're shitty. It's like, don't meet your heroes because what's fun is that they exist in your imagination. And so like Tova was saying, like, we should get into music because I think being in entertainment, you end up meeting a lot of these people that you enjoy and it ruins the illusion. And so she's like, let's get into music where we're never going to meet some of these people and we can enjoy them as like these, these figures. Yeah. Like, I don't want to meet a lot of these actors. I don't See, think I, I would have been... the same thing about music, though. I don't like I, I, any of it. I feel like... Because then you do... If you do meet them or you do, you know... Yeah. I, it's it, it. There's a stressful element to it. I agree with. What yeah, you're but it's, so it's it's not just a, like don't meet your heroes because then you're gonna see them be rude to their assistant. It's just that like because <laughs> you you're you're gonna just they exist. You know who John Mark is a fan of? Yeah. Like I think it'll be weird if when I if someday I'm sure I'll meet Mulaney and Jessalyn who are both like idols of mine, and it's gonna it's gonna. You sure, folks? I I don't I don't think I'll I don't think I'll dig it. It'll or it'll be weird. Like I don't know. So th that's why this got to stop. Is like. There's certain people that I'm like, oh, even if they're somewhere, I don't need to say hi to them. I'm going to be like, I, I don't want to ruin the so illusion. what's stopping? You talking to people? Yeah. <laughs> this got to stop me you, talking to you, new people. You accosting a celebrity <laughs> on the sidewalk you does has got to stop. Yeah. That yeah. has got to stop. Too many celebrities are throwing themselves at John Marco. Yeah. And, um, I, think, think, I think don't meet your heroes because they're always shorter than you picture them. Oh. Sure. Yeah. That's yeah. people always say to me. They're like, "You're you're so tall, so lucky to yeah. see them." Um. What's okay. Yeah, my lucky, this guy stop. My this guy them. stop is okay. Just say it clean. I'm gonna say it. This guy stop. No. Okay. Okay. Sorry. <sighs> this has got to stop. This has got to stop. Okay. Well, let me you know what's got to stop? Yeah. Imagine the cliff. The way okay. Russell's saying this the title stop. of this bit. Giving words. Now you said it, but she was talking. So now let's do it again. I want you to think externally, the way I have to. <laughs> this has got to stop giving words gender that don't need gender, like fake made up words like Shiro. Oh. Okay. Her story. I felt like we, 2016, that was kind of like what we were doing. People still do it. I saw Shiro recently. You could just say hero. That just is a, a, a man, a woman. What, you hate women now? No. <laughs> if anything, you could highlight H E R and little O for hero. Hero, I don't know, but like I, it, the her is in there. The so uh, there's there's we don't Diane Feinstein is she a shiro? I don't know. I'm just saying. I, I think why make the word a silly word? More like Diane Feinstein. Yeah. <laughs> Let's why, take it in the opposite why, direction. Let's why, insert misogyny into words. Why make it a made up silly word that's hard to take seriously when it could just there's no gender attached to it anyways. Just in a way by hero. making it shiro, you're like. Pointing out the gender more than just saying they're a hero. Yeah, you're you're like you're you're making it about. You're also like by saying the word, it feels like you're saying like, this person died, and I'm a f I'm a feminist as well. It's just like mm. just honor, just do this, do the task at hand. I gotta say, I hear two straight men explaining to women. Please, that, no, 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 no. What you're if you disagree, please. I don't, let I us don't know. disagree at all. The word hero. Um, no. It's mainly the word Shiro. I don't know. I, I, I hated it. I, no, don't back off. You feel strongly. <laughs> yeah, bow to me. <laughs> For I am your yeah. leader. Um, your lead her. Uh. <laughs> so, uh, no, I mean, the, your, I think it sounds like your problem, and rightfully so, is like girl boss feminism, right? Yeah. Have you well, heard this term? Uh, it's yes. like what shit but, but get, it's also gets further, printed on it's, mugs. I think it's not just that it's like, like it's like annoying, which whatever, but it's also like, in a way, it feels like it undermines... It, it's like... Oh, yeah, it trivializes whatever you're talking yes. about. Yes. yes. 
and and I feel like it it puts you and maybe this is not fair. When I see that kind of language, I put people in the this is what the kind of person that they are category. The person which is using the language or the person they're talking about. The person using the language usually in like a simplified box of like, oh, this is you know they're like yeah that label of girl boss kind of like which feels like sometimes feels like a false sort of thing that doesn't feel like it oh, yeah it's is like a commercialized totally it's like yeah. it's like greenwashing but for feminism yeah probably. it's just like any sort of like langu- corporate language now that and add like, on top of that that it's like the the person it's it's about this like complicated figure and and it's the the like Diane Feinstein like just say it's complicated the legacy it's the same way of calling like Ruth Bader Ginsburg like a boss bitch and not like <laughs> Not being like, oh, also she probably should have retired when Obama was in power. There's, there's just like it's both kinds of thinking. It's just this. It's a weird. Well, it's like it's it's wanting to pat ourselves. Yeah, like people who use those words. Honestly, I think it's fine to box the people in, who use those words yeah. into into a label in your head because uh, people who use words like Shiro uh, probably are patting themselves on the back for feeling like they're progressive. Without, yeah, don't you dare fucking interrupt me, you man. <laughs> And those people, back to what I, a lady, was saying, the people who use labels like that are like really they want to they want to feel like they're like making progress without ever taking any actual action to break through the gr- glass shielding. Uh-huh. Wow, uh-huh. that's good. That's wow. good. You know what? I, I can see that think, tonight I, I show writing. Sometimes it's surprising because sometimes it's like people that I'm like, oh, like I didn't think like it, it just is surprising. I, it's. It's a small thing. No, but it's, it's it's that kind of stuff that it's it's. I don't. Okay, let's. How about herstory? How do you feel about herstory? Oh, I hate it all. It's okay. insane. Yeah, you. Yeah, no, no. It's it sucks so but bad. I also I also hate things. This isn't the same thing, but like I, you know, like if you're you're getting a tour at someone's house and they're like, "This is his man cave." I was like, just like. And it's just a cave. It's just a cave, or it's, it's just, just a room. It's just another window. room with a couch and a TV. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, good. Uh, Make like, it about men. Go to your hero. Uh, <laughs> but no, I I said because no, we, like, we had that, text about this where like it's the same. If to me it's like especially when someone dies and like you're inserting that in, it's like if there was a tragedy and it was like, oh, uh, 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 like there was a bomb in New York and you're like, God, who is a woman, has forsaken us. Yes. It's like what, what? Well, what is, it's what also is it's distracting. Yeah, there are times. Actually, like God as a as a woman using female pronouns for God uh, is very. It's a funny example because there are times where it's so, and and I I, it, I hate the idea that a you know a divine presence is like an old guy with a beard sitting on a cloud. Of course, God the He. You know, I really I detest that. It drives me nuts. But also when people are like. Wow, God in all of her infinite wisdom smiled upon us. You you just yeah. can't. It's just so different that you can't not hear it. And then you're like, I, I don't want to be paying attention to that right now. I want to yeah. be talking about something yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be paying attention to, to to your like virtue signaling. Yeah. Um, what's your? This has got to stop. It's, 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 I got some pitches. Um. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll do this. Um, This has got to stop people getting hangry. (laughs) When people are like, sorry, I'm in a bad mood. I'm just, I get hangry. I'm like, can't you just not? Yeah. Can't you just hold it in for a second? Or eat a granola bar? Now I'm angry because you are uh, uh, behaving like a child. Like when, when people blame their like bad mood on like, Sorry, my tummy's rumbling, and that gives me permission to be obnoxious. Yeah. Do either of you get hangry? No, and I also think, but I do think that's something that's a quality people, they just, then it's like a cutesy thing. Like, <laughs> just something about me is that I get hangry, you yeah. know? And so then they fall back on it. And it, like, and permits to me, them To me, you should asshole. be saying, something about me, I struggle with emotional impulse controls. Yeah. And I can be a real nightmare to be around sometimes. Yeah. Like, that's something what about, you're saying. Something about me yeah. is, uh, I went to therapy for four months, and then I and then I broke up with my therapist, <laughs> and I think that nothing's wrong with me anymore. Uh, I completely agree with that one. Yeah, hangry. And also, it Again, feels... Again, can't take that word seriously. It's a still stupid yeah. little word. Yeah. It doesn't, you know, hangry. Real, real, uh, real, like, dictionary. It should be hang she. <laughs> <laughs> Hanger. Um, I like that one. Yeah. Uh, let's go on to our final segment. 
You better count your blessing. Russell, do you got a blessing for us? Yeah, um, a nice little small thing. Um, uh, Nicole's mom and her mom's boyfriend came to visit the city, saw the show, and um, it was very nice. That was so nice of them, but that's not the blessing. The blessing is that they gave us their password to Paramount Plus, and it's just nice to have like another app. You know, mm-hmm. you run out of things that you're like, and now I'm like, am I going to watch 45 seasons of Survivor? Maybe. It's all there. So uh, it's just nice to scroll on it. You a- don't have time for therapy. Listen. <laughs> Zero like- time. I, I'm going to watch all of Amazing Race. I, I don't know. I don't, if you I just, watch a new season of Survivor, please tell me. I'll watch I, I it. I will. I've I'll never, I've only watched the first ever season of it when I was a child. Oh, wow. Of Survivor? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, never Survivor's. Seen Hope and I got deep and then we we stopped. Was yours a pandemic depth? Uh, yeah, but we only did like six, maybe f- four or five seasons, and then we were watching the new ones, and they weren't as good, and we just we we faded off. I don't remember what season we were watching. My the person I was dating in, during the pandemic, but we watched. I'm sure there's like you can find survivors. out like this. You gotta watch this season. You know what I mean? Like I wish it was like a yeah I yeah wish, yeah. There's sh- there yeah. for sure are reviews Google, of like this is a boring season. You know, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. There's there's more than that. Max Rubin, who directed us, he has oh. a a Google email. Uh, I'll send it to you of like his ranking of all the seasons oh, wow. and why. And I mean, so they're crazy. It's just nice to have another thing to be like, you know, I've I've you know, what's my story? Um, my uh, first a little mini one. Uh, Paige Asachika, our producer. I was planning shows. Uh, I do the Silver Lining at Sesh Comedy Club. Link in comments. But I was planning next year's shows for January, February, March, and I we settled on the dates. The booker said it was all good. And I sent it to Paige to make the ticket link, and she said, "Did you check with Tova about this one?" And I was like, "Why? Why?" And she was like, "That's Valentine's Day." And I was like, "Thank God for you, Paige. Thank God for you." I was about to schedule a show on Valentine's Day, and that would not. I've gone you didn't over well. February 14th without. <laughs> no, I just saw it without. as a Sunday to do shows, and that would not have been good. But uh, the bigger the bigger blessing, because I don't think I got to say it, is I, I met my mom's uh, b- uh, boyfriend. That, lover. That she's lover. And he, uh, he is, is making ever. your He's mom. Oh. Um. <laughs> and, he uh, is finding her clit, and it is. Not like a. Are we going to do a, this? A pimple in a, 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 a trucker's armpit. Sure. I. I you're mom. right. I don't want to talk yeah. that deep about my mom. Yeah. Do you? But, is it? Uh, why don't you want to <laughs> call your mom's clit? Why don't you want to talk about f- what it's like to find your mom's clit? Mom clip? listens too <laughs> because she listens. She listens to all of them. Oh yeah. yeah. So you think oh. it might? Is the, are you experiencing a little bit of discomfort right now, thinking about the intimate details of your mom's sex life? And do you think maybe it's proportional because you've <laughs> numbed yourself to some degree of thinking about your mom's sex life, so you can talk about it in a way that we're like, "Wow, that's brash, John Marco. Wow. Really, wow. he's open." Except then, when we hit a button that's a little bit deeper, a button, a clit that's a little a bit deeper than what you're used to, <laughs> than what you're numbed to. Then you're all of a sudden like, ee, ooh, ick, ooh, 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 this ooh, makes my skin crawl a little bit. And perhaps it is that we are at a more normal level of how much we think about our parents fucking, which is we try not to. Yeah. And so you don't have to dig that far below the surface to get to the same reaction that you just had. Wow. So I really like my mom's new boyfriend. <laughs> um, he's great. Uh, no, I met him. He's he's fun. He's chill. He, he, he jives with the group. And... Uh, you know, yeah, he's got he's got the touch. You know, he's got the right rhythm. Sure, sure. Uh, so uh, you ma- you make my mom very happy, and uh, all those ways. You know, keep keep all keep those ways. Does he listen? <laughs> no, no, but he's very good, nice. And my blessing is that uh, it's it is it is stressful when your parents you call him daddy date yeah. because you you go somewhere and you're like, so now whenever I see my mom, I got to see this totally new person. Mm. And it's sometimes you're like, please be like, please understand distance or please understand like some things I'm just going to do. And he was very chill, mm. socially aware and uh, and a good looking fella. A good looking yeah, fella. Good. I mean, see that. So look, John Marco is fine. He's fine with being like my mom's fucking a hot guy. But the second we start to get. Listen, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad my mom's happy in all the ways, because the happier she is, the less she talks about it. She talks about it with me more oh, when it's not good. Sure. You know when she's yeah when she's swinging and missing. There, there was there was a guy. She was like he he can't get it up, and I was like Jesus Christ. 
Well, she's what? Probably in her 70s? 60s? Oh, my God. My mom would be more offended by that than anything. She's in her 60s. 60s. Yeah. That's not crazy. You weren't, she was, 70s. She, she didn't say, like, under. <laughs> she didn't say, my like. My parents are in their 70s. Sure. What's your blessing? Barb. <laughs> I just want you to know. <laughs> What's her name? Uh, Irene. Irene, I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful time with your new boyfriend. Wonderful. I wish you the Me best. Too. Reading and Talk watching sunsets. Yeah. Wait, is she? She's Jewish. Yeah. 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 Did you hear me say hugs oh. on the on the mic? Are you Jewish? Half. Really? Wow. I, I did. I did Sukkot like right before. That's why I was late because my I was in the I was in the like sukkah in uh, Madison Square Park and you then were shaking. My the, did the little shake you and shake the etrog yeah. and the sukkah. To, it makes a Palestinian disappear. Oh. Uh, that's a joke from yeah, No, I know. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, what's your blessing? What is my blessing? Um, I. Uh, <laughs> um i am uh dating a person a new person and um his uh and i was staying at his place for a while and um because he lives in a different uh city and i was staying with him for a while and his bathroom is the most echoey fucking bathroom it's just a little box of tile and uh you can just hear everything and his apartment is small there's absolutely no way to hide the sound of shitting. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And so then, like, there were a lot of times where I, like, just was, I would wake up and I'd be like, I have to shit, but I'm not going, it's just, it's too loud. So then I just wouldn't, and then you fuck up your rhythm, you know, like, you're, then, you're, then your whole GI yeah. track gets all messed uh -huh. up. And so now I'm home, and um, I, I'm back on a regular shitting schedule. It's amazing. Just let it loose. Which yeah. is great. And also. Wait, even if you put the water on? It's, it's you're so ready? Echoey. No, no, no. This is the problem. Uh-uh. This is what it is. It's that he lives in London. And in the fucking, in Europe, they split up the toilet room and the sink room. They're in two separate rooms. Oh, there's no water crazy. source. So you can't put the water on. And that there's no, is there's so no, like, funny. shower. Oh, well, if you're putting the shower on. The sh no, the shower and the sink. Sorry. There's a room with the shower it's and just a sink. A, a bathroom alone. And then there's a toilet. Uh, separate rooms. Wow, that totally is divorced from each other. Because sometimes you you would run the water, and you would also. I remember one time I was in a hotel, and I was trying not to be heard, and I tried to dampen it with like towels. <laughs> Wait, where were the towels? Yo, Russell, explain I, this. Oh, over covered like myself, not the like to shat onto wait, a towel. Wait, you mean like wedged in between yeah, tried your? Yeah, like, because it was an echoey bathroom. Just being like, maybe this will muffle. It didn't, but you know, you. Yeah. you wait, so you were like, so you're sitting on the toilet, and yeah. like the little crevices between you and the bowl you're and just I have a towel over you know trying to like like trying to minimize the bowl yeah. farts that's of that's that absurd. you know that's um absurd. but what, what are you gonna do you, you you know you have to do it sometimes you I know i would sing little shop little shop <laughs> that's what i tried to do that's very i had no idea that about london yeah, they split him up, and it's annoying. And the, and he's gonna come over to the U.S. Uh, for a couple weeks and visit. And my bathroom is not—it's not silent, but like it's not—you can shit in there and not be, you know, yeah. not not just be forcing the person, the other person in the apartment, to be listening to it. Yeah. <sighs> that's so a, I would say I'm grateful to be back in my own bathroom. Big which, messy laptop. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can take. <laughs> Absolutely ruinous shits yeah. in peace. Yeah. Oh, uh, bowl farts. They're blessing. so stressful. Yeah, they're because they're they're at, it's. I mean, it echoes if in, in, a, the in a right kind of bathroom, it's a nightmare. Yeah. It's like <laughs> there's no way we're getting any sound in there is going to be so much louder. You know. And if you try to if you try to dampen it with your body, like yeah. if you try to like angle it or only like let out a little bit, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yeah. it's uh, e either it doesn't work, it's still loud, or you're just like kind of making yourself constipated for a couple yes. of days. I had that in yoga today, where I was like, I was doing a pose, I was trying to like do a silent fart, but I think because whatever pose I was in was like crow, <laughs> and I think it's like what I thought would be a silent fart was not a silent fart, and it was uh, it was embarrassing. You know me, I can't. You do, yeah. He does I, not like. I do not, not like that. He gets really embarrassed about farts and poops and things. We're on a sketch team, and and there's there's a lady on it too, and and she's she's farting. You're the most uncomfortable with the f farting and never. Yeah, I I'm not far behind. I'm 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 on the lower thing from. Other yeah, thank people, God. You know, yeah. Um, all right, we'd like to do a last little thing uh, for our Patreon members. If you're a member of the Patreon, patreon.com slash downside. Join to watch my comedy special, The Rats Are In Me, all our live episodes, our bonus episodes, which we're now doing once a month starting October, which is now. And also, you, you, your, your name will get to scroll across 
uh, below as Russell reads a street joke that I meant to find. Uh, shut the fuck up, Russell. I uh, okay. I don't know what this is. Uh, no, don't do this one. Hold up, Russell, say something funny. No, no, this one's racist. No, 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 no. If it was racist, I'd handle it. That's right. He would have me. All right, let's. I read that I'm short not sure. One. Read this one. The short one. This one. Okay. We have a lot of patrons. Okay. Uh, I'm nervous. Uh, okay, Mungers in Kansas City. Oh, that's a name. Sorry. Mungers in Kansas City, and he needs a job. He goes into a placement center. This sucks. What? This joke sucks. Well, now I need to hear the end. What's it's, the joke? It's not a good joke. It's uh, I got it from the Tonight Show. All right, do this one. <laughs> I bet I wrote The it. old monk goes into the vault to study. The day passes. It's getting late in the evening, and the other monks start to get worried about him. So one of them goes looking for him, and as he's walking through the catacombs, he hears sobbing. He says, Holy Father... The sobbing gets louder as he gets nearer. Finally, he finds the old priest sitting at a table with both the new copy and the original ancient book in front of him. He says, Father, what's wrong? The monk says, the word is celebrate. Pretty Ow. fitting. Pretty fitting. Um, <laughs> thank you for being a patron. Patreon.com slash downside. Chloe, where can people find are you? Are you saying Russell doesn't fuck? Or are you saying our parents don't fuck? Uh, uh, like What? Celibate. Oh, fitting. I just thought we were talking about sex. Oh, okay. Um, oh, that, I wasn't like saying you were that as like your friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, Russell's I'm fucking. As, I remember, fucking right now. <laughs> Nicole said she can always tell when you brush your teeth <laughs> that she knows Russell's ready to have sex. That's her cue. <laughs> I'm a more also, brush your teeth in the morning normally. He brushes his teeth like once every three weeks. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, where can people find you? Uh, this is coming out October 17th. Great. Uh, you can find me on all social media platforms at Chloe Badcliffe. Like my last name, Chloe Radcliffe, but bad. And um, I am. I will be running this solo show in New York. Um, I'm waiting to lock down dates, so uh, nothing uh, public right now. But follow uh, my social media outlets, and I will be posting about where I will be performing Cheat in New York City and LA ultimately. Hell oh. yeah. Go check it out. Russell, where can people find you? Uh, at Russell J. Daniels on Instagram. Come see Gutenberg the musical on Broadway. Maybe you'll see me, maybe you won't. Um, and then I think we have an Uncle Function show coming up in November, but I don't know oh, yeah, the yeah, date. Yeah. Well, good. So I'll, try, I'll look it up and tell you next time. And for me, guys, I'm going to be at Zany Chicago this weekend. Hopefully it's sold out. But I don't know. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, five shows. Check me out there. And again, just a shout out for the Patreon, patreon.com slash downside. We were trying a new video setup today. Feel free to sound off in the comments how much you love it. Because I think this is what we're going to upgrade to and make these walls nice and pretty. What did you... Can I add a plug to mine? Of course. Oh. Um, I will be at the Laughing Tap in Milwaukee, October 27th and 28th. Perfect. The last weekend in October at the Laughing Ta Tap in Milwaukee. Excellent, excellent. And remember, whether God is a man or God is a woman, the important thing is God does not exist. This is the downside. One, two, three. Downside. downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi. Tell him, Russell. Subscribe to The Downside right now. Where? Down here. Or here. We don't know, but... Just do it. Or also, what else could they do? They could follow the Patreon. They could subscribe to the Patreon. Ah, no! Patreon.com slash downside.